My name is John Harkwell. I'm an architectural representative with Suprema. I've been with Suprema for 17 years. Um, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about protected membranes, or more specifically, or more often called IRMAs, inverted roof membrane assemblies. So, just a, a very quick blurb as to who I work for. Suprema is a manufacturer of uh, membranes and insulation systems. Uh, we've been doing that since 1908 and since 1978 in Canada. So enough about who we are. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about liquid waterproofing, uh, mostly hot, a little bit about cold, uh, positioning of drainage boards, uh, insulation, and ballast as well. We, this year, if, if you've been following a little bit as to what Suprema has been up to, we've been growing by leaps and bounds for about a, about 10 years now. Uh, we've got into uh, a variety of things, but one of the things that was missing in our offering was hot rubber. And it's something that we introduced this year. So because it's a below-grade waterproofing product or at grade, it falls into our category of product called Kofi. So this is ours is uh, Kofi H. Uh, it can be used horizontally, vertically. Uh, it's installed uh, usually in the field. You'd have 90 mils, reinforcement fabric, and uh, 125 mils. The reinforcement that would be involved, so the Kofi H is the liquid hot rubber. And uh, just as a reminder, when you're working with asphalt, there are three main asphalts being used. There's your uh, type 2 and type 3 oxidized asphalt which is used in built-up roofing, or BURs. Uh, then you've got your um, SEBS asphalt, which is, we're a manufacturer of SBS membranes. So it's essentially the same type of asphalt that's in our membranes, but with ethylene added to it so that you can mop it. So those, the last two, the first two are moppable asphalt. The third one is this one here. So hot rubber, or cold H is what we call ours. This one, there is no ethylene in it. It's straight SBS. And it is the only type, really, of asphalt that you can apply with a squeegee. It shouldn't be mopped in place. It should be squeegeed in place. And usually with a flat squeegee. So when you start your, your hot rubber, you're essentially building a mod bit membrane on site, as opposed to buying it prefabricated. So when you're, buying, when you're building it on site, it means that you're going to put liquid or, or asphalt, mem uh, reinforcement, and asphalt. So the asphalt you use in both cases is what is the hot rubber, is our Kofi H. But then the reinforcement really will depend on where you're going to use it. So we've got three types of reinforcement. You've got your fabric reinforcement, you've got your uncured neoprene, and you've got your mud bit as well, because mud bit has been used more and more in uh, um, details, upturns, and so on. So your fabric in our, in our case is called Soka Flash R, uh, and uh, the uncured neoprene is our Sopra Flash UN or UN, and our elastophene sanded and 180 sanded, so very thin, 2.2 millimeter thick membrane uh, used in upturns and the like. So this is essentially what we're going to talk about. It's uh, your concrete deck, so I might as well just go through step by step. First and foremost, surface prep is key. If you're going over an existing uh, uh, system, as much of the membrane needs to be removed before you apply uh, a fresh membrane on. Uh, remove all dirts, oils, um, uh, any pebbles, anything like that that could damage the membrane. If you're in new construction, then in new construction, a wood float finish concrete is sufficient for, uh, uh, for the application of hot rock. First, you start by, and this is probably the most important portion in there, which is why currently some, we find as, as we do roof replacements and our, our, the contractors do roof replacements, we notice that uh, existing hot rubber that's in place is poorly adhered and is bubbling off. And in a lot of cases, it's because of this. They didn't prime. They went too fast. So they applied the membrane straight away onto the concrete, and you can't do that. You need primer with hot rubber. So in our case, our primer is our standard uh, Elastical 500. Then um, being a liquid product is uh, sort of doing things a little bit backward than if you were using sheet goods. 
If you were doing sheet goods uh, and pre uh, uh, pre manufactured membranes, you'd have your you'd start in your field, do your upturn, go back to your field and do your upturn. In this case here, all upturns, details, drains, and so on are done first. It's essentially the same mindset as you would by doing urethanes, doing epoxies, and so on. All the upturns and everything so that when you do your, your membrane in the field, you're tying into your 90, and you've got already everything reinforced. So in this case here, uh, depending on the upturn, you could either start with an uncured neoprene uh, right at your upturn, and depending on how high the wall is, so if it's a parapet wall or whatnot, you could continue. So this here is your uncured neoprene, and this here is your filter fabric. So your uncured neoprene would be installed first, and then your filter fabric would be installed in front of it going up the wall. But this is not, not talking about going up an entire wall, just a parapet wall, uh, uh, a small wall. Then after that, you apply the hot rubber onto the wall itself. And you uh, install a separation sheet. Now, a separation sheet usually would be poly, especially in an inverted roof. Uh, and in front of it, because usually that would not be installed as and remain as is. Something would go in front, metal flashing, uh, something else would go in front. And behind that, there would be insulation. So. In a lot of cases, you'd either use extruded polystyrene, where is it? So I'm also taking the opportunity to introduce our new extruded polystyrene. So welcome to my little world. Everything starts with Sopra. So Sopra XPS, Sopra Flash, Sopra this. So Sopra XPS is our extruded polystyrene. So we've got the, the one I have in my hand, the 20 would not be the one that would be used in this year. It's for... Uh, just for showing you what the extruded polystyrene is. But the 20 you see there, that would be 20 PSI. The one you'd use in this assembly would either be 30, 35, or the 40. So 35 uh, PSI. So in this case here, this would be installed onto the wall, loose laid, and covered up with metal flashing. Or in some instances, a protection board would be installed in front without necessarily the uh, polyethylene film you see there. So, and then when you go into the field application, you're repeating somewhat the same thing. First, you do all your uh, drain details and so on. Drain details are usually done with uncured neoprene, where you would essentially picture frame the, uh, the drain detail, putting uh, two strips with... Uh, hot rubber, two more strips with hot rubber, and then you do a full coat first. And then you apply your reinforcement strip. In our case, it would be Sopra Flash R. And then squeegee some more SBS hot rubber in place. And that's, then after that, you install um, so a separation film that when the asphalt is still cold, it's still hot, and then you apply the separation fill so that the rest of it can go on. The only time really, as far as the separation film that you'd install, you'd either install, in most cases, poly. Again, we're talking inverted roof membranes here. We're not talking plaza decks. We're not talking uh, uh, concrete that's going to be poured on top. Because when you're talking that, then your poly goes out the door, and it's usually protection board that's installed. And it's usually an asphaltic core board. Ours is called Sopro board. There's Protecto board out there, and there's other types of asphaltic core boards, usually quarter inch. That would be installed because not only does it act as a separator, but it also as a as a protection layer. So in this case, is where you would pour asphalt on top. For instance, you would put the protection board and pour your asphalt on top. So in this case here again, we're talking Irma's or protected membranes. So you have your poly that would go into into play. And you could potentially finish with this type of assembly. So we've already gone over the concrete deck, so the primer, the asphalt, the reinforcement, the, uh, the uh, hot rubber again, the separator, and then your extruded polystyrene, a filter cloth, and stone. That's your, your typical inverted roof membrane assembly. But in some cases, drainage boards are needed, or required, I should say. So we've got uh, a variety of types of drainage boards, but they can really be 
uh, uh, put into three categories. And I've got two samples here. One is an open diffused system, which is this one here. So if you notice, this isn't your typical dimple board. This is fairly open. In other words, it permits water and air to flow through this. And then you've got this one here, which is, in this one here, there's two categories of these. This one happens to be a recycled uh, polypropylene, but there's also uh, pure virgin plastic. So the recycled polypropylene, usually it doesn't have the compressive strength of your per pure virgin plastic. So in this one here, the compressive strength would be uh, uh, 6 PSI, which is uh, our line of uh, sober drain products. So this would be our sober drain 5G. We'd have the next step up, which is uh, um, Sober Dream 10G with 11,000 PSI, 15 and 18G. So really it becomes a question when you're doing, installing a green roof as an example, or that you do want to install a drainage board in your assembly. Where would your drainage board go? Just sorry, go back up here. When we look at this assembly here, would your drainage board go onto the poly or would it go, in other words, under the insulation or on top of the insulation? Well, that will depend what's going on top of it. So how the system is being finished. If you're looking at putting a filter cloth and stone filter cloth and green roof, in other words, having the potential of air flowing under your system, as you do see and sorry that I'm going back and forth here, but as you do see here, what will happen here is if you do have air that can flow, your air will actually flow uh, at the ends and at various uh, potential uh, uh, little, uh, um, I don't want to call them uh, gaps, between your insulation, creating a f uh, convective flow. And what that convective flow will do is that it will essentially reduce or change the uh, performance of your insulation. So, in other words, this product here, this has an R value of five, of five per inch. And it doesn't matter if I'm holding it in my hand or if it's installed in a system, it still is five per inch. But if you want to keep really the, the true performance of this, you need to have this in contact with the substrate. Again, we're talking inverted roof membranes here. We're not talking plasidex, and I just want to remind you guys of that. So, the drainage board in this case really should go on top. Okay, so as this here. And when you put the drainage board on top, you want to, as much as possible, dry that water off. So in other words, this is not the drainage board you should use on top. Most extruded polystyrene manufacturers aren't too crazy about this drainage board being installed on top of the insulation. It's more this guy here. So this open diffuse drainage board, what that does, it permits as much air and water to flow through it, fairly unobstructed. So to go straight to the drain, uh, to, be, uh, to evaporate fairly quickly, so you're keeping your insulation dry and you're keeping your roof system dry. So on our website, we've got a variety of details that talk about either inverted roof membranes or plaza decks, uh, concrete uh, uh, coverings and the like. These are just a few of them that we have on our website. I'm not gonna explain them all because it's gonna take a little while. And this is just, uh, it's something that you can stop by our booth uh, 1102 to talk to us about our extruded poly polystyrene line. Uh, we've got uh, a variety of compressive strength going from 20, 25, uh, 30, 40, 60, and 100. So the 60 and 100 is usually infrastructure work, uh, things where you're going to have something fairly heavy, uh, tunnels with uh, having to accommodate uh, fire trucks full of water and so on. Now what we've, uh, what we are going to publish in January is a document that I'm going to go over in a couple of pages, but in this case here, we're actually going to, to uh, publish the weight of balance that would be needed over the insulation. Because the more insulation you put, the more buoyancy that you're playing with. 
And so what we've done is, because a lot of municipalities and well, a lot of municipalities are going to control flow drains, that means there's more water that's staying on your roof, which means that your insulation all of a sudden becomes very buoyant. So to make sure that everything stays in place, we actually have uh, a document that we'll be publishing very soon, giving you the weight for either a regular drain or a control flow drain. So you'll be able to use that as a guideline for how much weight to put on your insulation and inverted roof assembly. So as I was saying a little earlier, the, the extruded polystyrene line we have is, um, how can I put this here? You now have the choice of three colors, blue, pink, and light orange. So we fall within that category. Type 4, uh, can you all see S701 uh, compliant, and so on. This is the document we'll actually be publishing in, uh, I think it's either January or very early February on protected membrane systems. And the images that you saw in the presentation actually were taken from that document. So look for it on our website. It's going to be part of our uh, technical bulletins. Now, I mentioned I'd be talking about a little bit of cold. Uh, we introduced this year a system called Cofeen LM Bar. And what Cofeen LM Bar is, it's a below grade waterproofing liquid applied product. Will probably be mostly used on uh, vertical substrates, can be used in horizontal substrates, but it will be cold applied. Um, so we have three components in that in that system. We'll, so we've got a uh, brush applied, a spray applied, and a trial applied uh, product. So they all they are all high solid content. They're all single component. Uh, so 98% solid on the uh, product that can be squeegeed or brush applied. But this is the important thing. This product can be applied to green concrete. So green concrete, that's three to seven days old. So if a project needs to move forward or in a lot of cases, concrete pillars and the like that need to be waterproofed so that construction can, be, can move forward, this is the type of product that can be applied. So this one is... Um, so again, cured in three hours. Uh, this assembly here is if you were going horizontal and uh, poly fleece would be required, it would be two passes of uh, 60 mils each with a poly fleece. But uh, vertical, you can do two coats of 30 mils or do one coat of 60. And then uh, uh, this is the uh, trial applied product. It, with that trial applied product, we also have it available in sausages that can be gunned out as essentially for a cant at your roof to footing detail. So to go all the way around to provide your cant so that your liquid waterproofing uh, has some help going up the wall, right? And then we've got the spray applied product. Now, all these three products are not urethane base. They're not epoxy base. They're polyura. So they're single component uh, STPE products that uh, can work at varying degrees, can work below zero as well. If the, uh, there's a little bit of care that's in the unit, that's something that we can discuss with you. If you want to either stop by our booth or contact us. And in the event where a reinforcement would be needed in your corners uh, and uh, yeah, your inside outside corners, uh, vertical and horizontal, we do have a poly fleece available. But that's not always required. If you go with the spray applied product, you don't necessarily need the poly fleece in that. And also, we have various details on our website that are available. Any questions? I went through this quick because it's, I know we were short on time. So, any questions at all? Uh, if you do need us, we're in booth 1102. Uh, you can reach us through our website. You can contact us directly. Uh, so if there's any other, oh, here, let me just do this here. Happy holidays. Enjoy the rest of the show.